welcome and thank you for joining us. This evening, hopefully, we're going to have a conversation about uh, the sustainable brands and how companies need to sort of act to create transformation in the business world. And then it's also about take out the more unsustainable products and services. This idea that consumer choice is everything and choice is really important, it's actually a falsehood because retailers and manufacturers are making choices on our behalf on a daily basis. And, and I don't find, even in these you know, programs that teach sustainability in business schools, rarely are they teaching how to make that business case in a systemic way. Um, and instead of focusing on um, maybe corporate reputation and driving up our awareness of our brands as green brands, which really, if we're honest, a lot of green marketing is trying to do, we need to focus on what is the outcome we need to accomplish and how are we going to get consumers there. Or what is the nature of my behavior in relationship to my neighborhood or my neighborhood's contribution behaviorally and how our neighborhood compares to another neighborhood. So there's all kinds of uh, opportunities, um, whether you call it social status or, or, or sort of elements of gamification to um, motivate, uh, inspire, and reward behavior change. So I think we are at this um, uh, really um, uh, remarkable confluence point, and I think we have a choice to make. Let's go and look at what mainstream consumers are buying and how they're living, and use that exploration of that future possible world to say, okay, well, if that's the future, and if that's what the world looks like, what can we do today to accelerate the pace of change. And that may mean letting go of some of the corporate reputation scores that a lot of our clients are sort of judging themselves on, at least in the short term, and really turning to behavior change, I think, is the, is the success metric. We have to really talk about a system, because no matter what the brands do, we have an economy that, that has created a system that makes good products expensive and bad products cheap. You know, Steve Jobs, it's an interesting case study for a lot of reasons, but one thing is very clear about the way he operated his company. He wasn't waiting to listen to what consumers would tell him, right? I mean, he was very clear that if we listen to what consumers tell us, we're never going to deliver any real innovation in anything of interest. That we're looking at, at, at an organization, you know, that has people from the finance department, you know, factory floor all the way through to the most senior executives, how do you inspire all of them to engage and to, to do their part? Because whether it's you know, energy efficiency all the way through to innovating um, the new products and services of the future from the R&D department, everybody is going to need to play a part. Because if you're just thinking about the typical things like reducing waste or, or, or reputation, you miss some of the biggest financial drivers that can benefit some of these large companies. So I am an optimist, but my optimist is in the terms of a window. I think we have a window in which to change business models, change behavior, change the way we measure success, and we have to do that over the next few years because if we leave it longer than that, then actually it'll be really hard to sort of turn that ship around. We shouldn't, we cannot wait for demand. We have to, we have to create it and we have to, we have to lead. So we need a new marketing paradigm that's going to push us forward and Let's, let's try and get things in place so for the last five years we can really ramp this up.